I'm Chelsea White of Chel Sweets, and I'm here today to show you how to make a super festive fall cake. So I have here some 8 inch cake rounds that I've made uh, with a cinnamon spice cake batter, and we're going to be filling it with a really amazing apple pie filling. So this is going to taste just like an apple pie, but kind of like an apple pie and a layer cake had a baby. Probably the best way to put that. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in now so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing as I build this cake. So just like always, I'm starting off with my 10 inch uh, grease proof cake round. I'm just going to add a dot, I guess actually a generous dab of buttercream onto here and this just helps secure my first cake layer to my base. So I'm adding my layer here, making sure it's nice and centered. And I'm going to pipe a ring, I'm going to secure this to my body, I'm going to pipe a nice thick ring around the perimeter of the cake. And this is important because it helps lock in the apple pie filling that we're going to be adding in a minute. So I'm just going to make sure it's really nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to take a couple spoonfuls of this apple pie filling and fill in this ring. So if you guys are curious about the recipe that I'm using today for both the filling and for the buttercream, and of course the layers, um, it's all up on ChelSweets.com. So you can head over there and check it out if you want to recreate it. Someone's asking where do you buy your cake boards? Great question. Where do you buy them in bulk? So I get all of mine online. I get pretty much all of my cake supplies online. So I live in Manhattan and it's pretty hard to get cake supplies here. There are some stores but they're few and far in between. Um, so I really like to order online. That way you can really get a great variety and exactly what you're after. So I'm repeating the same process with my next cake layer now. And again, you guys, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or what I'm making, feel free to ask. We'll try to get through as many as we can today. This is just re regular buttercream? Yeah, so this is my classic American buttercream with just a touch of cinnamon um, to really get that fall taste through and I guess every note of the cake. There's cinnamon in the layers, tons of cinnamon in this apple pie filling, and there also is cinnamon in the buttercream. So what, what do you use for apple pie? So apple pie filling is not actually too difficult to make. It's water, it's a lot of cinnamon, some sugar, and a little bit of cornstarch to help thicken everything. And then of course some apples. So I'm actually only making this cake today with three layers. Just because we have so much filling, it really adds a lot of height onto this. And I don't think we really need to make four layers today. It would make a really tall cake. However, if you guys wanted to make a super tall cake or only a two layer cake, the beautiful thing is that this cake can be modified however you want to feed however many people you want or for whatever look you're after. So since we already had some frosting in a piping bag, I'm filling in between the layers and we're going to smooth this out into a thin crumb coat. And then we're going to pipe a really fun, I don't know even what to call it, like a festive <laughs> design. Fall foliage? Uh, fall foliage look onto this cake and it's really going to get that fall look across. Thank you for the help, Robert. <laughs> Robert, you should be my creative director. So I'm just going to, I'm getting all of the frosting out of this bag here, and then we're going to start to smooth it around the cake. So I'm working on the top now, and then I'm going to slowly work down the sides. Someone's asking if you keep the cake or if you throw it away. I never throw away cake, ever. That's a, that's a sin. Um, so I always try to share my leftover cakes with my coworkers or with my friends. Um, I never throw cake away. I think that just goes against the way I was raised. Um, so I always try to have someone enjoy it. And I also always enjoy some of it myself too, but unfortunately I can't eat quite as much cake as I make. So I like to share. So I'm making sure that we're really filling in between the layers because there's pretty big gaps with all of that filling that we added. And I'm just working this kind of to make sure we have an even coating around the cake. But we're going to be piping a lot of frosting onto this, so we don't need a super thick coat of frosting. We just want to get all of our layers covered. Is it possible to use applesauce instead of apple pie filling, or is it not sweet enough? So I think, I mean, a lot of cake decorating comes down to your preferences. So if you don't like things super sweet, you could definitely modify the recipe. However, I think that plain applesauce might actually be a little bit too thin for a filling. So 
Um, but you can always try it and see if it works. I guess if your buttercream was thick enough and could hold it in place, you could definitely give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna take my bench scraper now and kind of clean up our base a little bit and just make sure this is pretty smooth. We'll clean up the top just by dragging in towards the center. Some nice little swoops. And the beautiful thing about this cake design is that you don't have to have a perfect base coating. So if there is a little bit of unevenness or maybe something's a little bit not perfectly straight, all of the frosting that we're gonna add on next is gonna cover that. So if you're new to baking or you wanna try something a little bit adventurous but you're still working on some of your techniques, um, this is just perfect for you. So I have here a bunch of different frostings that I put into frosting bags. I've mixed some colors that are both orange, red, yellow, and I have a few different frosting tips. So there's Wilton 1M, there is a Wilton 2D, there's a bunch of different tips like French pastry tips, open and close stars, and a petal tip. So now that our cake has a nice thin frosting on it, or layer of frosting, I'm gonna start to pipe all kinds of designs around this. So we're gonna do some buttercream rosettes. I guess I'll start maybe with some just nice dabs of frosting. So you want your frosting to be pretty thick for this because you want it to be able to stick to the sides of the cake and keep its structure. But I naturally make my um, buttercream pretty thick. I don't add a lot of heavy cream, but if your frosting is a lot thinner, you might wanna try adding a little bit less heavy cream if you're gonna attempt this. And today, you guys, this is, like I said earlier, a classic American buttercream, which is pretty stiff. Um, but you could definitely use Swiss meringue to do this as well. You just need to make sure that it can keep its shape. And where can they find this recipe? Great question. So this recipe, you guys, is up on shellsweets.com. Um, and again, it's a cinnamon spice layer cake that's filled with an apple pie filling. And we're frosting now with some cinnamon buttercream. So you really can have as much fun with this as you want. You could use whatever tips you want, whatever you have on hand, and whatever colors you like. Um, again, this is going to be a fall foliage cake, so we're sticking to a lot of yellows and oranges and reds, but you could do this with any color combination you want. So now that we have some nice, I guess, colorful dabs, I'm going to start adding on some buttercream rosettes. And we're just going to keep filling the space until it's all the way filled. I'm starting with this yellow buttercream, and then we're gonna fill in with all of those other colors. So you can really put these anywhere you want, have fun with it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Any other questions out there? Is there cinnamon in this buttercream? There is. So if you actually zoom in, you can see little bits, little specks of cinnamon. Um, I didn't add a ton because if you do, it really does change the color of the buttercream but there is enough in there to have just the slightest taste of cinnamon. So now that we've added quite a bit of our yellow buttercream onto this cake, the real magic is gonna start to happen and we're gonna start adding on some more colors. So it's really fun if you combine different frostings into the bag because you can get this beautiful look as you make these swirls. So we're gonna do some rosettes, some more, I don't really even know what to call those, colorful dots. And we're working our way around this cake. Ooh, got a little air bubble in there. So right now, you guys, this I'm using a Wilton 2D tip, which is just a closed star tip. But again, you guys could use whatever buttercream or uh, frosting tips you have on hand. And to make all of this buttercream, all these vibrant shades, I used a gel food coloring. And I really like using gel food coloring because it really helps you get some great shades with, without having to use a ton of frosting. Um, but you could use liquid food coloring, but it's a little bit harder to get the right shades. So I really recommend using a gel food coloring if you can. And also if you wanted to use natural food coloring, you could do that as well. But again, it's hard to get um, super vibrant shades with that. So now we're using a little bit of a different tip and we're starting to fill in you can see the cake, the look is really starting to come together. What are the different tips? So I'm using a wide variety of tips. We have some closed star tips, some open star tips, and you can do different looks. Like you can see I'm doing some swirls, I'm doing some dots. Um, just to name a few, we have a Wilton 1M, we have a Wilton 2D, and I have a leaf tip, which I believe is a Wilton 104 tip. So 
Some people are asking, does the cake or the pipe filling make the cake soggy? Um, so if you are worried about the cake getting soggy, we're gonna eat this right after this, so I'm not really worried about it. But if you were gonna let the cake sit overnight, you could always add a layer of frosting underneath it to kind of protect the cake layers. Um, so if you are worried about that, you could always do that. So we're just filling in. You can see we don't have too much open space left anymore, but we have a few more bags of frosting that we're gonna work with before we finish this cake. And this is really fun. You could do with your friends. You know, you could each grab a frosting bag and you know, make some different patterns, make some swirls. I should have asked my friends today that are helping me with my live stream to help me with this. Could have helped move the process along. <laughs> what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Um, I am going home to my fiance's family um, to celebrate Thanksgiving in Pittsburgh, which should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully everyone else has some fun Thanksgiving plans as well. Are you just making turkey? Um, I am not, but I believe that my future mother-in-law is. <laughs> Do you have any favorite Thanksgiving dishes? Um, you know, I'm obviously a big fan of pie. Um, but other than that, I actually am not the hugest fan of Thanksgiving food. But I do love mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. I could eat sweet oh, potatoes yeah. every day of my life, yeah. What are your guys' favorites? Well, I ordered a pie today. For Thanksgiving? Yeah. From where? In Italy's. Ooh. That's pretty fun. Pick it up at the plaza. So fancy. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So we have just a couple more bags now to add to this. How do you keep the buttercream from getting too warm in your hands? Were the, was this frozen before or? Actually, so this frosting had sat out at room temperature, but that's a great question because um, a lot of times if you do hold a piping bag in your hand for too long, it can change the texture of the buttercream and even the color if you're using gel food coloring. So it's definitely something you want to be careful of. Um, but if you're switching between a bunch of different piping bags and you're not taking super long to do this, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I only really run into problems with my frosting getting too warm when I'm piping on fur, which sounds silly, but um, <laughs> that's probably the biggest, uh, or the time that I have the most problem with that type of thing. So I don't think that it should be a problem with this though. All right, you guys. We have one more piping bag that we're gonna do now and we're gonna do a really fun pattern with this. So this is just a leaf tip and we're just going to add some kind of squiggles to this cake, which sounds silly, but I'm gonna make it look like leaves. Or I guess what I think looks like leaves. I guess everyone has their own kind of perception of what a leaf looks like, but you can just make some fun ruffles and get, get playful with it. Like I said earlier, there's really no right or wrong way to decorate this, and I think that's what makes it so fun. If you were to make it with your kids, they could make it exactly how they want to see it or what they're picturing in their mind. Or with your friends. You, I feel like whenever anyone has a frosting bag in their hand or a piping bag, they have fun. Maybe that's just me, actually, I don't know. No, it's so fun. I think that's a general, <laughs> whenever I have parties and I leave frosting out, people seem pretty happy. Mary, how are the leaves in Hudson this weekend? Oh, just like this cake. <laughs> I really want to go upstate soon. Oh, so See beautiful. all the foliage. Yeah, so you guys, the beautiful fall foliage that we have right now in New York is definitely the inspiration for this cake. Um, I've seen so many amazing photos, and um, that is definitely what made me want to make this. We're going to add one more leaf here. And as you guys can see, the leaves kind of change in color too because I added some different colors into this bag. So people are wondering what color is the cake itself? So the cake itself is kind of like a light brown shade and that's just because it has a ton of cinnamon in it and other spices. Um, but it's just my classic layer cake with some additional spices. Oh, like leaves and flowers. Yeah. So I think that I have actually filled in the entire cake, believe it or not, maybe. The other thing about this though is that I feel like if you keep looking, you could add frosting onto this for days. And before you know it, you have like five inches of frosting around it. So you definitely have to know when to stop. Um, but I think that now I have fully covered our cake and our fall foliage cake is complete. I don't know whether to call it a fall foliage cake or an apple pie cake, because it really is both. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and swing around now so we can slice into this bad boy. Some people were worried at first. They couldn't see it coming together. But... It is, <laughs> when you <laughs> add the first layer, it's like, what are you doing? But it, it does come together. 
And yes, I did pick the red knife because I wanted it to match, FYI. How do you recommend storing the cake overnight? If you want to store the cake overnight, um, I would just pop it into the fridge. All of the buttercream that we have on here and that crumb coat that we added really locks in the moisture. So it should be fine in the cake over in the fridge overnight. Okay, so we're cutting a massive slice here. Sharing it with my friends, don't worry. I'm not eating it all. And we can see that wonderful apple pie filling. Go ahead and set this down. Ooh, got a runaway rose there. Oopsies, we'll add that onto that. <laughs> that is one massive slice of cake. All right. So you guys, that is our fall foliage cake. One more time, that's the front of it before we cut in. That is the center. I hope you guys enjoyed this cake as much as I enjoyed making it tonight. I live stream every Wednesday around 7.45, so if you guys want to see more of my live streams or cakes, you can tune in next week. Um, I also share all of my cake creations on Instagram, and my handle is at Chelsweet, so if you want to see more of my cakes, you can check me out there too. Um, and again, you guys, the recipe for this entire cake is up on chelsweets.com. So thanks so much for joining me. Hopefully, I'll see you guys again next week. See you later.